Good morning and happy Independence Nigeria. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us on this uh, special Independence uh, broadcast uh, coming to you live on Liberty Television uh, where we'll be discussing Nigeria at 58. Uh, today is our independence, and of course, uh, 1st October is very significant uh, to Nigerians uh, because this is the day uh, a country, Nigeria, was born, so to speak. Um, well, you know what it means. Uh, it's a celebration day and, of course, uh, a day to reflect also on the uh, journey uh, so far. Uh, on the platform this morning, uh, we'll be doing Nigeria at 58. Uh, a retrospect. And of course, uh, we'll be looking back at uh, uh, the journey uh, from independence till that. And of course, uh, the metamorphosis and of course, the, 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 the ev uh, evolving, if you like, of Nigeria uh, as a nation. Uh, you, you know that uh, uh, Nigeria was also, uh, also had, about, had its independence about the same time with other countries. So we'll be looking back and then doing some comparison to see where we are precisely. And uh, uh, this morning, we're joined uh, by uh, personalities uh, who are uh, seated in the studio who are from the academia. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Usman Mohammed, he is also the CEO, uh, Center for Legislative Studies in Africa, is joining us to discuss Nigeria at 58. Uh, Dr. Happy Independence. Happy Independence, thank you. He is also joining us uh, on the platform is uh, a frontline politician, uh, a gubernatorial aspirant, um, well, we may say candidate of the Social Democratic Party uh, in Kaduna State, talking about uh, Haruna Saeed Kajuru, is popularly known as uh, AG. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my Abdul colleague, uh, Abdul uh, Aziz Ahmed Kadir, is also uh, with me in the studio. Together, we'll be looking at Nigeria at 58. Uh, doing uh, a reflection now. Um, well, a brief background. You know, Nigeria as a country has huge, you know, human uh, population, if you like. Today we're talking about a country with uh, close to 200 uh, million people. Uh, it's a country that has 36 states, uh, including the federal capital, I mean, plus the federal capital territory, uh, 774 local governments, uh, more than 500 ethnic nationalities. Of course, Nigeria has uh, uh, come of age. It has already found a place uh, in the Committee of Nations. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, 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 most, I mean, one of the, 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 the largest black nation, if you like, and of course, uh, a country that is endowed with human and, and natural resources. One of the leading oil producers in the, I mean, in the world. Uh, you know, you can talk about all the credentials. Nigeria has attained all of that. Well, uh, today, as we're talking independence, we'll be looking at uh, the legacy left uh, to us by the uh, founding fathers of this country, we're talking about uh, the likes of later uh, Samu de Bello, Chibunam uh, Diazikwe, uh, Tapao Balewa, and the rest of them. Uh, they put together, I mean, rather, they put aside the regional interest and, of course, work uh, towards uh, Nigeria's independence uh, with the hope that uh, a country, uh, Nigeria, will, uh, uh, I mean, surpass all the challenges that uh, were prevailing at that point in time. Um, thank you once again for joining us on the platform. Uh, my colleague, uh, Abdulaziz Ahmed Kadri, we want to also give you a little background before we, we continue with the program. Well, thank you, Shapiro. I said that you, you, you didn't tell the listeners we're actually reaching them uh, from Kaduna Studios, not from Abuja, seeing you. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> well, we're reaching you from our Kaduna Studios this morning, a special edition of the program. Well, 58 years after independence, well, normally they say life begins at 40. So you can say Nigeria might be about 18 years old, <laughs> probably 18 years of life. But for the first time, we are having uninterrupted democracy of almost 20 years. Is that something to celebrate? Nigeria again independence, almost the same time with Malaysia. In comparison to Malaysia, like my colleague said, can we say we've made the progress that we are supposed to, or are we where we ought to be? Probably, well, you can say we are not. But so far, so good. Like, I, like we always say here, if we insult the leaders before us for not doing the right thing, at least we have to do the right thing to ensure that those coming behind us don't say the same thing about us. 
Nigeria at 58. Of course, so many. I'm sure if you listen to the president's speech this morning, he said so much. The, the Defending the territorial, territorial integrity of Nigeria is one thing. But then uh, having people from the academic and, I mean, from the uh, political scene, uh, I mean, who best to talk about this uh, than these people? So I'm sure you will be having uh, a lot. Of course, earlier we interrupted a, a, a recorded interview, and that will be coming to you immediately after this live session. Right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we, it's about time we move into the program proper. Uh, let me start uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Usman Mohammed, uh, Nigeria at 58. Looking back, uh, where would you place uh, the country at the moment? Well, it's a mixed feeling. Okay. As I always say it anywhere, anytime, when I have the opportunity, uh, you look at the history of Nigeria. As you rightly pointed out, a country that is destined to be a leader within the sub-region and Africa with enormous resources and endowed with brains, talented people in sports, in leadership, in economy, in almost everything. Unfortunately, very unfortunate for a country like Nigeria at 58 that is still having political instability in so many respects. And then economy is, shut, is battered by corruption of the politicians themselves and also dominated by some cabals, especially in the dependent oil industry, and also all its institutions, when you look at the educational institution, the agricultural institution, that was the mainstay of the economy of Nigeria. And uh, even the family institution, the political sector, all have had its own ethnic and prebended political quagmire. Mm -hmm. All this put together brought about ethnic favoritism of the major three ethnic terrorist tribes of Hausa. <laughs> you call them terrorists? They are. They terrorize this country mm -hmm. in a very, very unprecedented, uh, unprecedented manner. Mm -hmm. The Hausa, the Yoruba, and the Igbo. As if they are the only tribe existing on earth. And I'm angry. Mm -hmm. And many of my generations are so angry, and we better say it, anywhere we are, mm -hmm. that this country had never had it so good. We remain in the academy. Mm -hmm. We are academics, mm -hmm. and we, we say it as it is, without fear or favor to anybody. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria will never get it when we continue with this ethnic division. Mm -hmm. We are only deceiving ourselves. Mm -hmm. You rightly said that, or oh, is it uh, Avilaziz. Avilaziz, that mm -hmm. said that we were at par with some middle-range economic powers today. Mm. When you look at Indonesia, mm. Malaysia, back, we have even Ghana, Singapore, Lisa. Ghana, mm. we've never had it so good. Mm. Now, every leadership that comes and go mm. will always blame the attitude of the followers. And the followers will blame the attitude mm. of the leaders. Mm. We've never had it so good. So let us not even say we are celebrating anything at 58. Hmm. Even the stability, I mean, even the, the, the consistency in our polity, 16 years, 20 years, 18 years of undemocratic, I mean. Uh, uh, what has changed? Democratic. The more things, so the more things seem hmm. to change, the more they remain the same or even worse than before. Right. A man I want to say it. Yes. Yes, they so can say the fact, you know, that uh, Nigeria has had all it takes, you know, to be uh, a great nation in terms of human resources, in terms of material resources, we have all that it takes to be a great country. Uh, issue of governance has been 
a major concern. We've had, you know, we haven't gotten it right in terms of governance, and that, to a very large extent, many believe has retarded the actual progress that we should get. But be that as it may, is it to say that, is it to push the blame on, 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 on the leadership and the political class alone because everyone has a stick? Indeed. Uh, we've said it times and times with a number. Uh, I think last year, about this time we were here, we spoke right. on the same day. Right. Uh, Maybe because I follow this trend, and uh, happy, maybe you did not know mm. that m uh, I'm also 58. Oh, that's so, 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 <laughs> so, so, so each time you call me on this day, I always honor the invitation uh, right. to celebrate my birthday as well. Spe special birthday party. Special birthday party. <laughs> uh, now, the truth is that all stakeholders are to blame for this, but the first class mm. to take the blame has always been the leadership. Because without proper leadership, you can't get it right. And so far, we've not had any moment in history where we have gotten it right. When we have one head that is trying to put things right, then we have the descendants that are doing it so badly. The institutions are not corrected easily. Then you have the whole cosmopolitan of activities not going right. If you have the, at the federal level, somebody is making an effort, the sub region, the sub national government at the state level, if the majority of them are doing so horribly, then you cannot have the impact because there must be synergy. So even if the leadership is able to do certain things at the center, is not able to carry the states along, mm. and the local councils at the lower levels that normally plant the seed that germinates up to the uh, harvest time mm. are doing nothing, then you can never get it right. Take for instance, if the primary education is not doing right, they cannot have the secondary education that is being, while well, the primary is being handled, it's supposed to be handled by the local councils. Mm -hmm. And then the secondary schools are supposed to be handled by the state. You can go there and the concurrent, the, the administration is in the concurrent. Yes, yes, yes but the, how much of that can be done by the states mm -hmm. is limited because that right is given to the local governments, even though uh, uh, states and even federal governments can establish schools and uh, private institutions do that at, the, uh, the at, the, at even the kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. But then, the moment the predominant, uh, I mean, constraints are not doing it right, then you cannot have it right at the secondary level. Mm -hmm. The tertiary institutions, the university and the polytechnics will not have products that will service them right. At the end of the day, mm. you grow to have a very bad system. Mm. Take the corruption issue. Mm. You, you have at the primary school level, pupils are allowed to do all sorts of things mm. because the teachers themselves are not sound in character, they're not sound in, in behavior, they're not sound in even the educational, uh, I mean, development issue. If the academic is not being stood right. Even corruption is being transmitted. Is that, is so, that? so that's the issue. Mm. So you mm. can't get it right. So we have to have a complete mm. reorientation. Right. We have to have the leadership that is able mm. to guide through. And, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. that can only come when there's a complete coordination from the center. The center must understand that it has a role to carry the, the, the sub-national... The of government. Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, and that's the first. Then in the past, we have had series of clueless leaders mm. who do not understand where we should head to, mm. where we are coming from. They don't even understand the history of what the nation mm. had stood for mm. in the past not to, deter, to even think of where we should dream to, to head to. Mm. They don't understand it. So, so you, you, you now have a situation that we don't even know where we are. Mm. 
Mm. We don't even know where to, to, to head to. Mm. So leadership is vital mm. first. And because that leadership is lacking, has always been lacking, mm -hmm. rather, we cannot get it right until we, we get that level. Right? Let, let, let me go to Dr. Osman. I mean, looking at leadership mm -hmm. and taking it from where you start. Mm -hmm. The leaders, founding fathers of Nigeria, who laid the foundation for what we have today as Nigeria, so Ahmed Bello in the north, Awolowo in the southwest, as Nnamdi Azikiwe in the, in the southeast. Now, don't, I mean, those are people who we can say belong to the three major ethnic groups. Those were people who made sacrifices. Those were people, we saw Sebdana who died without a son, but today his name re-echoed more than people who left, who left 30 sons and co. Now, at what point did we derail? Because we saw these people lay solid foundation for Nigeria. Now, at what point did we lose? Now, thank you so much. Mm. The question mm. is so important uh, when you want to diagnose the present condition of the country. Mm. You cannot understand where you are if you are not rich in history mm. from where you come from mm. and then make projections of where, where you are heading to. Mm. Now, I've been issued in the, even before independence. Mm. We have tried the McPherson Constitution, mm. the Richards Constitution, mm. the Little Eton Constitution mm. of the 40s, mm. all up to the time that culminated to the call for independence mm. at the parliament in Lagos, mm. where it was derailed by the same nationalists who felt that at the late 50s, Nigeria will not be ripe for independence. Mm. Postponed till the 60s. At 60, when we were independent, mm. the Republican Constitution didn't give us much. All the contraptions of the Constitution that came, and then we had the independence, and then a parliamentary system of government, mm. all came with its own default. Mm. And the default line all along had been the colonial legacy of divide and rule. Mm. This division mm. was predicated mm. on ethnic politics. Else, how will you think that Nigeria at independence could not have produced a Mandela? Nigeria did not produce a Mandela, but they produced regional hegemons, which you have Mm. actually now have, have said. Mm. In the north, we had Sir Ahmed Bello of blessed memory. In the southwest, we had mm. Sir Awolo. Mm. In the southeast, southeast we had uh, no, Sir no, no. Namdi Azikwe, mm. who was the president of Nigeria. Mm. And even then, when you look at the merger between the NCNC mm. that gave a majority in the parliament with NCC in the south where it was vehemently opposed, mm -hmm. which now brought about the downfall of the government, mm -hmm. in the, uh, the parliamentary government mm -hmm. with Achintola mm -hmm. and so on, who, who was thought to have given his birth right to the north, mm -hmm. NCNC. When you look at the whole contraption at that time that led to the demise of the first republic, mm -hmm. now you have it that we didn't have it right. Because even in the second republic, mm -hmm. when uh, Sheo Shagari came, the same, the same problem mm -hmm. came to dominate mm -hmm. the presidential system of government that was experienced in the Second Republic during Shehu Shagari. So what has changed then? Nothing. But then, even then, it was even better. Mm -hmm. Because people like Shehu Shagari, mm -hmm. of blessed memory, of, of living memory, mm -hmm. and uh, Maitama Sule, mm -hmm. of blessed memory, mm -hmm. and others, were so, they were the giants mm -hmm. that held mm -hmm. the past relic of leaders that came to serve, mm. not to be served, mm. that came to give mm. a mentor, mm. not to take. Mm. And so, even the Second Republic was even better. Mm. But at the same time, ethnicity and the issue of election and population mm. divided Nigerians. Let me give you an example. 
During the Second Republic, after the election, there was two thirds of 19. There was so politicized, you remember, mm -hmm. two thirds of 19. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even then, the North mm -hmm. was criticized for having a larger population. Yeah. And this kept on. This kept on mm -hmm. and kept on mm -hmm. rolling. We didn't change this fundamentally in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And this Constitution, by default, was given to us by the military. The military sat down, of course, with the Constituent Assembly, the wise men, and gave us the 1979 Constitution, mm -hmm. which by default today, mm -hmm. today, is the same Constitution we are operating mm -hmm. with amendments mm -hmm. in the Parliament, in the in the National, uh, in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. So what has changed? So we've never had it so good. Mm -hmm. I agree with this analysis, the last speaker. But then, mm -hmm. what's the default? The system fundamentally, mm -hmm. by structure, mm -hmm. by the Constitution, mm -hmm. is the default. Do we need federalism now? Is it a true federalism that we need now? Can we operate a true federal system of governance? Mm. If we need restructure, here is the time. We need to. Because I'll, I'll, I'll it, it has been politicized. Yeah. Even the, the federalism has been politicized. Yo. Because APC mm -hmm. took a whole lot of committee, which was chaired by His Excellency Erufai, mm. and they brought mm. a sweeping change that I found very laughable. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's laughable. Most of the time, of course, we saw the military insurrection, mm -hmm. military incursion into politics. Because some of us remember the first military coup. May so rest in peace. General Asum's marketing has said it's like breaking a calabash, that it is going to continue for a long time. Mm -hmm. It sounds something that some people laugh at, but we saw <laughs> how long it took Nigeria to actually send the Kachi guys back to the barrack. Mm -hmm. Most of these issues we had, because if our first founding fathers were allowed with the way they started, of course they started at regional level. We start after independence where everybody was struggling to develop this region. And people would say, if they had allowed to continue for at least 20 years, we wouldn't have been where we are. So military insurrection and military incursion into politics, what has it, has it done? Thank you very much. I think before I respond to that, let me uh, look into doctors uh, um, submission okay. I do not uh, want to deviate completely but I, th I think I want to disagree a little on mm. th that I think the regional setting not because of the regional as it is the regions uh, were not there as regions per se but they were regions of geographical setting except for the south west and southeast uh, predominantly the north was not kind of homogeneous in terms of tribal setting. Mm. It's still not. Mm. <laughs> it's it's religious. so huge. Mm. And, and even religious. It, 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 mm. Even religious. Mm. So, so there was not that ethnic issue. And the Sardona we knew was never a tribal person. He was not working as a head of any tribal uh, lineage, mm -hmm. uh, not, not, not could he have done that. Mm -hmm. But of course he could have chosen, if, uh, probably, but the, the, uh, in today's selfish uh, leaders that we see, uh, that could have been possible, but he did not do that. So, so what, again, they tried to do in, in all honesty, all of them, were, was to allow institutions to work. You could remember that uh, the permanent secretaries of then, permanent secretaries or head of uh, whatever they call administrative heads, mm. could say no to political heads. Okay. Institutions of government were operating independently. They were not politicized. They were not politicized. They were not politicized. They were not politicized. They were not, politicized. Yeah. They were not being forced co or coerced to do anything that was not like what we see today. System, mm. system wise. Mm. So so we, we had what it what it takes mm. to, 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 to be great country. Mm. And the regions were competing, were competing amongst themselves. Mm. And they were looking at their own regional advantages. Agriculture was emphasized in the north. Mm -hmm. We were trying to catch up with other regions in terms of education. Mm -hmm. We were looking at industrialization. 
They, they, they tried to bring uh, textiles that was supposed to support the value chain mm -hmm. into the north. So Texas was booming. Mm -hmm. Other uh, agri value addition industries were coming up. Mm -hmm. so, so we had cotton, we had uh, food mm -hmm. uh, industries coming up in the north and the southwest. Because they were so close to the, the sea, they had advantage, mm -hmm. And they were bringing, we had industries that were manufacturing things that were coming up north, including export to Niger, Niger and Chad and whatnot. So things were moving. Right. So, so the institutions were quite yeah. clear. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to the, the issue of the military, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's where we began to get it wrong, mm -hmm. indeed. Because the military came mm -hmm. because of the one basic mistake that they created themselves. Mm -hmm. They started a coup that was not called for. Things we could have gotten any, I mean, best for us, mm -hmm. but they came and removed government of the day. Mm -hmm. On regional sentiment, that's when the region, region issues, the mm -hmm. travel issues mm -hmm. began, became prominent, yeah. be, be, be began to, to come in. Mm -hmm. The evils took the lead in the coup and they eliminated other tribes and, and mm -hmm. they made it really an ethnic uh, mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Then again, they said they promised development. They couldn't deliver. How could they deliver? Because they weakened the institutions that could deliver. You need the vehicles to deliver, to transport anything. Th these vehicles, the institutions were killed. So the, 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 the military leadership was all about a command and control issues. They did not allow process to, to work. People were being removed from the one who said no to the military. So they, they, be, they kill the institutions. Mm -hmm. And why did they do that? Because they did not have the future in the mind. Mm -hmm. the, let, me, let me come, right. let me come. Why did they, why? Because they didn't know when they were leaving. Mm -hmm. There was no time. If you had a governor who was sent to mm -hmm. a state mm -hmm. or a region, he didn't know when he was going to be removed. It's a posting issue. So he did not have long-term Focus. Mm -hmm. He did not know what to plan for. He did not know even the development requirements that were there for the people. Mm -hmm. And they were posted, mark you. They did not know, in most cases, what the North needed. If you are posted from somewhere, for instance, you don't know what Kanoa State needs. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what Sukarno State needs. Uh, you don't even understand. It, took, mm -hmm. it can take you like forever to understand those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Doctor, um, looking at, uh, you know, uh, where we are today. Uh, the issue of uh, inconsistency in, in our policies, you know, uh, government, I mean, military interventions and so on, uh, as, we, as we rightly establish here, has affected, you know, the smooth, um, I mean, pace of our development, which is also key. Again, we've seen the decline in trend. Uh, despite the fact that we have regional leaders, as you put it, you know, but we are competing you know, to bring about development, industrialization, building uh, educational institutions, you know, uh, providing infrastructure and so on. Today, uh, 50, 80 years after independence, we're still talking about fixing roads, you know, building universities. We're still talking about uh, uh, how we can get it right in terms of our power generation and supply. Where exactly uh, are we getting it wrong? Well, I still said that and, and I insist that the indirect rule created regional hegemons. That does not mean that I'm blaming those hegemons. Mm. No. By default, they inherited a system mm. that they could not even change as at that time. Mm. Years after, their children and grandchildren cannot change that system and the system is still serving external capitalist system. They don't have their own system, and they cannot rearrange the system. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the military regime, as Saeed has said, it's true, military came mm -hmm. and destroyed the fabric of the society. But the military didn't rule by themselves alone. Mm -hmm. The institution that is critical in democratic governance mm -hmm. is the assembly, it's representation. Mm -hmm. They removed that suspended the constitution, mm -hmm. and brought the politicians to rule by fiat. And that happened, mm -hmm. 
in collaboration with the politicians who taught the military how to be corrupt and the military surpassed them. So there was this mutual interaction between the military mm -hmm. and the civilians mm -hmm. and also the politicians who helped the military mm -hmm. to corrupt the system at the same time. Mm -hmm. So having said that, we come to the legacy that has been destroyed. What has gone wrong? Mm -hmm. It's a simple issue. Leadership and followership. You cannot isolate leadership from followership. You must understand that they go together. Mm. If the followers are well educated, well informed, mm. and indeed mm. they hold their leaders accountable and ask mm. about how they amass wealth, why they amass wealth, mm. in one hand, and on the other hand, they are living in abject poverty mm. and penury and they have become beggars, I think the society will have been better. So it's a question of mutual interaction between the leaders and the led. Mm. If the followers ask every accountable question mm. about how is it that we don't have these roads, we don't have water, the electricity is not there, 247, mm. and then we are beggars, and you, you have condoned yourself with a larger generator, that supplies mm -hmm. light to you, mm -hmm. that you have water 247, mm -hmm. that you are enjoying yourself so much, mm -hmm. from whose resources, who is supplying these resources to you? How did you get it? Not to go and knock on the door of the politician mm -hmm. and say, my wife has given birth. I want to get married. Mm -hmm. I don't have this job. I, let them provide the job. Let them provide the amenities and the critical infrastructures that the common man, a graduate today, mm. will rely on and even be an employer of labor. So once the people understand this basic thing and they are well educated, mm. it will be hard for anybody to steal their money and still live in an extraordinary mm. lifestyle. Mm. That is as simple as it is because the past leaders didn't live in, in extraordinary lifestyle. Mm. And there have been examples, and these are the names being echoed all along. Mm. They didn't leave any house. In their account, they, they left very little, or maybe two pounds or three pounds. Mm. Today, their legacy have lasted. Mm. So we must ask questions mm. about how our leaders acquire their wealth. And also, he has talked about the issue of agriculture and other critical institutions. Mm. These institutions are the same institutions that these present leaders met, mm. privatized to themselves, mm. monetized to themselves, mm. their families and their friends. Mm. And these institutions are no longer existing. Mm. But they will tell you that in today's uh, world, it's not about government. Government has no business, business in business. But, but, but there is time. <laughs> to privatize. Well, societies have stages of development. Yes. We haven't reached that yet. Right. We can reach that gradually. Yes. No, it's, it's about time we go for a break. But then I want to ask uh, AD this question before we, uh, we go for the break. Now, talking about the political class, you know, the leadership, we've seen that uh, sense of patriotism, that sense of national nationalism, and of course the interests of the country at heart has uh, completely eroded, if you like. Now, the political class are struggling, if you like. Uh, all what they are struggling for is about themselves. It's about personal interest. We've seen politicians jumping ship. You know, it is not about ideology anymore. Uh, if you find, if, if, if you don't have a platform to run, you move to another political party. All you are interested in is how to, you know, reach, uh, how, to, how to grab power. And grabbing power means, you know, becoming rich. We, we haven't, you know, the leaders of the past were not actually like this. How do you think this, um, what role do you think uh, this change in our attitude and character and leadership, uh, you know, played in this uh, mess we are today? Thank you. I think uh, my question is right. Oh, yeah, the analysis you have put forward is right in some way and is wrong in another sense. Okay. Politicians, yes, we can have a number of them, or a number of us, mm. I'm one, that tend to be profit seekers. Mm. They seek to maximize gains to pass on to themselves. Mm. Is leadership a profit? I mean, a business venture? Yes, they see leadership as an opportunity to make money. 
Leadership as an opportunity to help their clan. Leadership as an opportunity to help their friends and themselves. Mm -hmm. Leadership to, 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 to they created to, to, as an enterprise, so to say. So we have this class of leadership. And indeed there are other class. Of, there's another class mm -hmm. that is conscious of the fact that Nigeria requires a change. The Nigeria needs leadership that we, 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 we need badly in order to take the country to a greater uh, right. position in the Committee of Nations. Right. And indeed, in a pair, not just pair group analysis, but internally we need individual to, uh, in, uh, citizens to have a better sense of belonging. And I can tell you there are those class. Mm -hmm. But mark you, there are issues regarding how somebody can emerge as a leader in this country. Mm. It is obvious that the Constitution mandates that mm. you can only belong to a political party in order to, 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 to have leadership position, mm. whether in parliament, whether in an executive, uh, you have to, to have a political party. That is why some people have to have a political party. Mm. For us, we believe that leadership should be a vehicle to change people, mm. not to change ourselves. Mm. And we don't follow the economy. Mm. That's why we find, you find in our class, we have trends in trying to develop institution, that's the political party, as against those who follow, those that are only looking for tickets in a party that they believe that party will win. Mm -hmm. but no, we want to have a change of the mind. That's why we, we build institution. And it's not the same mm -hmm. as those who simply seek to profit from an institution. They only walk into a party in order to contest election. Right. Okay. You tell them by their character. Mm -hmm. You tell them by their disposition. Mm -hmm. You tell them by their ex by their past. How have they been prepared? What have they been championship about? They are only championship in order to seek mm -hmm. to, to, to benefit, mm -hmm. not to develop institutions. Right. Okay, in case uh, you're just joining us, it's Independence Day uh, special. Uh, of course, we're looking at uh, Nigeria's 58th independence anniversary, uh, the journey so far. And of course, uh, we're reaching you live from Liberty Television Studio here in Kaduna. And now we've been talking with our guest, uh, uh, Malam Haruna Saiz Kajuru, uh, a politician, if you like, a gubernatorial candidate uh, of the Social Democratic Party, and Dr. Usman Mohammed. Uh, the CEO of uh, Center for Legislative Studies in Africa. Uh, with my colleague Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kajo, together we've been looking at Nigeria at 58. Uh, we'll take a short break here. When we return, we'll continue with the program. Please stay with us. Channel said the Star Times Classic Bouquet Reloaded is the best deal. The best. Well, if you're paying over 10,000 naira for a cable plant, then it has to be good. Thank you, Ike. We, we pay, pay one nine. Choose it. <laughs> Get the best deals on channels like Fox TV, Ebony Live TV, SD Nollywood Plus, Discovery Family, and much more with Star Times Classic Bouquet Reloaded for only 1,900 naira from September 1st to October 31st, 2018. Don't miss out on all the drama, action, and comedy on Star Times. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Sana takabur marapa, mewe kilita zamparata da kia. Kuma mene ma zaya wa takarab gomna njihar zampara. Ya baye ni chua raza si shiga harka za pan pida dan takarab gomna njihar. Sa kabakon tabba chingi ngaz kia da adalchi. Ta jama antaru a jahar sika basu biyo bayan wanu yutaro masuru wada saki. Jama antaru sambasu tabba chinchi war. 
za a yi zaben kamar yadda wajen jami'ar APC ta kasa ta bada cewar a yi yatinke wato mutum bayan mutum zabanin a baya cewa za a yi zabe ne ta hanyar delegate wanda hakan yasa ya janye kudurin sa na tsayawa takarar dan haka ne yanzu yake kira ga magoya bayan sa da suka rijista da jami'ar ta APC da su fito dan yin zaben wannan zabe dai na jahar Zamfara an dage shi ne zuwa ranar litinin saboda rashin isuwar kayan zaben da wuri sanarwa daga sanata kabur marafa mai neman tsayawa takarar gwamnatin jahar Zamfara Thank you very much for staying with us on uh, dialogue, or rather special uh, broadcast session uh, on Nigeria's uh, 58th independence anniversary. Uh, coming to you live from our studio uh, here in Kaduna. Uh, we've been looking at Nigeria at 58, the journey so far, and uh, we've been talking with uh, Dr. Usman Mohammed, uh, CEO, Center for Legislative Studies in Africa, and uh, Madam Haruna Saeed Kajuru. Uh, a gubernatorial candidate of the Social Democratic Party in Kaduna, and uh, my colleague uh, Blasis Ahmed Kadu. Now, we've heard so much, you know, on the issue of governance. Uh, Nigeria has had it good, you know. Uh, God has blessed this country with abundant human and natural resources. Mm -hmm. uh, from the economic point of view, we have the oil. Nigeria is one of the leading producers of, uh, of, of oil, uh, you know, in the world. And we've seen how much money has been generated, you know, from our independence till then, running into trillions of naira. How has this, for instance, translated into uh, uh, the, the actual development we want to see? And how does it touch the life of ordinary uh, Nigeria? Well, Shafi, mm. we can't go far. Mm. You and I and uh, every conscious living human being in Nigeria today mm. knows that we have wasted billions in corruption. Now let's take us back a little bit to the Gowon regime. Mm. Even the military at that time were even better planners. We had first national development plan. Mm. We had second national development plan. We had that, look, those development plans conceived, gave birth to Ajakuta still rolling me, mm. Kasena still rolling me. Some of the textiles were well taken care of. Mm from the relics of the colonial legacy of what we had. Mm. If you remember the regional government mm. had what? There is horses. They had North. regional North. marketing boards. Mm. In the north, there was the Grand Northern Cotton Marketing Board mm. in the 50s. It gave the regional government mm. of Ahmed Bello almost about one million pounds to start Ahmed Bello University. Mm. The University of Ife mm. started from the Western Regional Marketing Board of Coco, mm -hmm. it gave more than one million pounds mm. to that regional government to start University of Ife today, mm -hmm. called Awolo University. Of course, mm -hmm. University of Ibadan has been the first uh, pioneer university, it was in existence, mm -hmm. and Usuka. They all had that collective leverage mm -hmm. that was packaged and given. If you talk about <coughs> economy, mm -hmm. there was price control effective price control. Mm. There wasn't a lot more than stagflation or inflation. Mm. Everything was going steady. Even the income at that time was even better. It was little, but it, it took care of better so money. many things because mm. the economists at the center mm. with the central bank, mm. which was a relic of the West African Currency Control Board. Mm. I'm taking you back to history, mm. to the classroom. Right. West African Currency Control Board control the entire West African colony mm. during the British. Now, when these uh, uh, countries mm. started becoming independent, mm. they were given their own uh, central banks to manage. Mm. But the physical and monetary policy of those banks were not radically different from the colonial legacy. Centered, mm. controlled, mm. price, wages, mm. salaries, allowances, mm and there was strict civil service rule on financial issues. Where are they today? Mm. These are the issues. Where are they? They are all eroded. Mm. He said it, Said said it, 
and I concur with him, mm -hmm. that the permanent secretary can say no to a governor at that time. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the, because of the, the strength of the sanctity. Mm -hmm. They were sanctimonious, mm -hmm. so holy. They were not touched. They were respected. Mm -hmm. And those people in the name of affairs mm -hmm. took charge and care of whatever they were given because it was people's trust. Mm -hmm. Today, where are these moral issues? Mm -hmm. Today, where is the economy? How do we plan the economy? Do we have planning? Do we plan? We depend on the revenue generation and mm -hmm. revenue uh, 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 handouts. Mm -hmm from the ministry, from finance ministry. Mm -hmm. Where, wh why, why should we? Mm -hmm. If states are not viable to sustain themselves, mm -hmm. why should we sustain Doctor, states and still create states why and become a budget? Mean, that, 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 that is the question. <laughs> right. I mean, I would have loved to go on and on. It's supposed to be a special edition of the mm -hmm. program. But before we go, I think uh, mm -hmm. I have to ask uh, His Excellency this question. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's even leave what happened up to 1999. Between 1999 and now, especially mm -hmm. looking at the three arms of government, the legislature especially. Mm -hmm. Before now, we see a legislature that is so powerful. Leg mm -hmm. Legislature can actually... Mm -hmm. But between 1990 up till now, it seems to, we seem to be having a decreasing quality of people that represent us even at the, na at the National Assembly. What mm -hmm. could be responsible for that? Not really. You see, the, the, the greedier you get, mm -hmm. the more independence you lose. Mm -hmm. The judiciary is the greediest institution you can think of. Mm -hmm. Look at the, what is happening at the National Assembly today. Mm. Every person that goes there, except for a few minorities, mm -hmm. goes there. One, he didn't go there because he he had he had any personal qualities, mm -hmm. but rather he was anointed. Okay. Mm. Somebody has given him that leverage well, takes to be appointed, mm -hmm. uh, to get the ticket, mm -hmm. not because he deserved it. Mm -hmm then he has to be answerable. Then he has gone there, he, has wo he wants to be a king unto himself. He wants to amass so much wealth. Mm -hmm. Then he has to compromise. Mm -hmm. They go to oversight function, not because they want to ensure a standard has been followed, mm -hmm. but rather they want to go and make money. Look at the case of uh, Hamid Ali. Mm -hmm. Hamid Ali has been trying to, to, to re-engineer the, the Nigeria Customs Service. Mm -hmm. But what, what does he get? If he has not been the kind of person he is, they would have um, twisted him have into doing nothing. Mm -hmm. They rather want him to be as well to them. They want him to, to, make, uh, to give them money mm -hmm. and whatnot. That's what they collect elsewhere. Mm -hmm. They don't want him to function. They only want to survive from his handouts and whatnot. Mm. So these are the kind of things that, 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 that they are asking for. Mm. So what do you expect from that? So, but let's take a note, take a, for instance. I was in service in the first uh, uh, regime of Ahmed Makalifi. Mm. I was in service the second tenure uh, to a certain level before I, uh, yeah, I, I, I exited myself. Right. So, so that, the first one, he allowed them to function. They were working. They were given things. They were given challenges. Mm. Oversight was really a function. So, 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 except for a few of them who had no capacity, that was lacking in them because they didn't have the background and whatnot. But then, in a, in a holistic manner, he has worked with them in a such in such a manner that he had that allowed their independence. Mm -hmm. Not what we have today, rubber stamping. The Everything the executive the does. That too. Yes, except at the national level now, mm -hmm. where the president is unwilling mm -hmm. to down to the tune of the executive, I mean to, uh, to the legislature, mm -hmm. but they are still doing what he, 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 they, they think will uh, uh, to twist him down. Mm -hmm. Look at, we never had a budget since the, 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 the coming of uh, the president. We never had a budget. That's what I, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Because each time the budget has been prepared, it will never be passed. Mm -hmm. As I talked to you now in September, October sure. the 1st, mm -hmm. there are uh, extra ministerial departments that have not had their budget uh, approved. Mm -hmm. In the third quarter, I mean, fourth quarter of the year, yeah. what, what do we have? So, so we are losing every day because of legislative uh, branget, or, or what branget. Branget. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so what can we do? Mm. So, so that is the kind of thing that we get. Mm. Even if you send a motion, mm. quality distant uh, uh, bills, there's no oversight function.
they cannot um, implement it. They cannot do anything about it. The capacity is lacking. The selfishness is their greed of how to make money and how to empower yourself to be president or to be a governor in, 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 your, in your state. You want to use that as, an, as a vehicle. So you can get that back. Well, Chair, we'll have love, like I said, we'll have love to go on and on. But of course, I mean, this is a discourse that is going to continue for a long time to come. Hopefully tomorrow we'll continue yeah. from where we stop. Mm. Though Shefi will be in Paris or Abuja, I'm sure. Uh, we can also take the discussion <laughs> from Abuja too. Yeah, Shefi, remember we have a number of interviews that are also going to be relayed yes. in a short while. So, so it, it's, it's a continuous process, actually. Yeah, so I think uh, at this point we have to come to the end of the session, but then uh, that's not the end of it. We have, as I said, a number of uh, uh, interviews with personalities, you've, you've I've seen one earlier on uh, with uh, Buba Galadima. Uh, we expect to have, uh, you know, others are also coming. Um, as we progress, we we'll look at various issues. You know, time was of essence. Yeah, uh, we were able to only do just some key areas, but there are a number of issues that need to be touched. Uh, on this note, we come to the end of uh, the session of the democracy. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Nigeria's 58th independence anniversary mm. special uh, from this uh, uh, studio of Liberty Television uh, this morning. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you know the time of our guest, Dr. Uh, Usman Mohammed, uh, CEO Center for Legislative Studies in Africa. Pleasure. Alati um, Haruna uh, Said Kajuru, uh, uh, a Thank frontline politician and also uh, a gubernatorial candidate of the Social Democratic Party. Thank you very much, uh, Thank gentlemen, you for, for taking your time. Mm -hmm. On behalf of my colleague, Abdulaziz Ahmed Kajal, my name is Shafir Suleiman. You prefer uh, to add, of course, happy birthday to him. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and he's going for the primaries of his uh, party. Exactly. <laughs> happy birthday, Nigeria. So it's, uh, it's happy a birthday. foundation. Oh, it's a, or an affirmation. He's going for an affirmation. All right. So all I invited. All right. <laughs> stay tuned. In the next one hour, indeed. <laughs> right. The, so, so stay tuned as we also take the house of action of uh, the, the sessions in, in a moment. Please stay with us.